Hello, I'm children's author Tommy Dombervan, and as you can see, <clears throat> this is my bedroom. Now I'm all ready for the giant sleepover, and I hope you are too. Are you all having a good time? I can't hear you, I said, are you all having a good time? I still can't hear you, but that's probably because I'm on a video and you're not, so let's not be silly. Now, I hope you're all going to have some spooky stories. Before you go to sleep tonight, I've got a very special treat for you. If that's something you're looking forward to, what I've done is I've written a very special Scream Street story just for you. Here it is. <laughs> it's so new, it's only printed off on paper, so I've got it in my folder here, and it's called Sweet Screams. So what I need you to do is all settle down, Wrap yourselves nice and warm in your sleeping bags and your blanket. Cuddle up to your teddy bears. Make sure you've got your pyjamas on the right way around. And we'll begin. Luke Watson lay back in the ebony coffin, folded his arms over his chest and gazed up at the moon hanging lazily in the sky above. Yep, this was officially the weirdest sleepover he'd ever been to. Apart from the fact that he was outdoors, coffins, he decided, weren't exactly the most comfortable of beds. He could hardly move his legs, and every time he tried to stretch out his arms, he cracked his elbow. He sat up, leant over, and rapped on the lid of a golden sarcophagus that lay on the grass beside him. What? came a muffled voice. I can't sleep, said Luke. Can you? The lid of the sarcophagus swung open, and a young vampire appeared, red-cheeked and gasping for air. I can't breathe in there, let alone sleep, moaned Rhesus Negative, and I'm sweating like a bog monster. As long as you don't make my sarcophagus smell like a bog monster, warned a bandaged face that appeared over the side of the casket. Cleo Far was wriggling around on the grass in a sleeping bag. This thing's far too soft, she grumbled. Remind me again whose idea this was, said Luke. Well, retorted Rhesus, it was your idea to have a sleepover, and my suggestion to do it outdoors as it's been so hot. But it was the marvellous mummy here who had the brain burp and decided we should all swap beds. I just thought it would be a good way to learn a bit more about each other's cultures, exclaimed Cleo. I didn't know Luke's sleeping bag was going to be this thin and... Ah! Cleo jumped as a decomposing hand burst up out of the ground beside her. The hole widened and one of Scream Street's resident zombies, Doug, clambered out of his freshly excavated tunnel, clutching a piece of rotting meat. Little dude, he beamed. What's the scoop? No scoop, Doug, sighed Luke, as he slumped back into the coffin, banging his head on a brass handle as he did so. We're just trying to have a sleepover. But it's not going too well, added Rhesus, mopping his brow with his cape. Doug frowned, and his chin fell off. He quickly retrieved it, coating the exposed bone with a generous amount of gooey green saliva, before sticking it back in place. No wonder, little dudes, you're all in the wrong cribs. Try telling that to bossy bandages over there, muttered Rhesus. I just thought it would make things a bit more fun, Cleo snapped. Chill out, compadre, soothed Doug, taking a bite from the lump of meat. Ah. I'm all for expanding the mind, but you need your rest, man. You'll get nothing but the grouch if you try and snooze in another dude's sack. Doug's right, said Luke. If we're going to get any sleep, we'll have to go back to our own beds. Give me my sleeping bag, he said to Cleo, and you can get back into your sarcophagus. Rhesus, the coffin's all yours. The trio switched back to their own beds and settled down. That's better, sighed Luke. You're telling me, said Rhesus. Nice and firm, smiled Cleo, relaxing against the hard surface of her casket. Thanks, Doug. No problem, oh little lady, beamed the zombie. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm off to find something to spice up this stomach. The mummy sat bolt upright. Stomach, she cried. Doug waved the rancid meat in her face. Found it lying about in a pile of bones, but it's bland city, man. I thought it would be full of whatever cool cuisine the dude had for his last meal, but it's as empty as a ghost's gizzard. That's disgusting, groaned Cleo, pulling her bandages up over her mouth. Hey, it's not just brains on the menu when you're undead, you know, said Doug. Those things go straight to my thighs. The zombie grinned at the trio, losing his chin for a second time. I've got to find me a stapler, he groaned, grabbing his lower jaw to hold it in place. He dived back into his tunnel. Cleo back, lay back down again slowly. I think I'm going to be sick. Then I'm glad you're not in my sleeping bag now, said Luke. I'm glad too, teased Rhesus. Have you noticed there's a distinct lack of moaning in the air now a certain mummy's back in her sarcophagus? Ha ha, said Cleo, refusing to rise to the bait. Now, everyone get some sleep. 
She gave a big yawn. Night, night. Sleep tight, replied Rhesus. Don't let the bed bugs begin, Luke. Luke, no! 